We are Embrace the Suck 21. Yes, we are. My name's Spencer. And I am Daniel. This is episode three of Fred Dibna's Made in Britain. Oh, and yeah. this episode deals with the source of the iron. The last one, uh, he was finding the coal, and then he's going to find where yeah. the iron was. I'm just here for it. I mean, this is crazy. This is like the blue collar tour of the area that yeah, I didn't know the, I needed. Yeah, same here. We recorded the first two episodes in advance and we didn't have, have proper time to say thank y'all for uh, support on this series. Like, we Man. discovered Dip now with all the regular clips that you check out, you know, doing the steeplejack stuff, yep. climbing a chimney all of that stuff and we just fell in love with the dude yeah man and just like hey let's keep him around i feel like the steeplejacking and the chimney demo that was like all inspiring but this is oh yeah equally all inspiring in the polar opposite kind of way like not in a bad way it's just like when you see someone living out their dreams it's awe-inspiring. So I, I love this. I love this journey. It's very heartwarming. It's good to yeah. see something so not cringy, just feel good watching. Like, right, right. It's wholesome. A bit of calmness in yes. the chaos that is ETS-21. Yes, it is. It's nice, man. It's nice. Yeah. So let's just I'll, dive yep. in, man. Let's do it. Three, two, one. miles already covered, Fred Dibner has now reached wow. the Lake District on All his right. grand tour of Britain's industrial past. My eldest son Jack's come over from the island of Man, you know, give us a lift on this trip. And I'm, I'm really, where we're going on, I think we need all the help we can get. We've got Jimmy in the support vehicle behind us, you know, like we're stopping so frequently through lack of steam and, and small boat bills. The, the pair of flashing lights behind is a must on country lanes like this. It's like I saw a comment once that said they probably had to edit out all the times that other drivers were cussing out Fred for blocking them in traffic. Yeah, um, I, and I get that too, man. But so did Fred. He knew. He, I feel like Fred knows his people. And you get mm -hmm. mad and you honk before you know it's Fred. You know what I mean? Right. And you you zoom past him. Maybe if you, you're able to pass him, you look and you're like, I get it. Like, hey, buddy. I, I can't be mad. Yeah, I can't be mad, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. but uh, <clears throat> it will never cease to amaze me how small the roads are there. Yeah. Yeah. They're basically like the back roads here where yes. I am. Yes. And, yeah. Yes. Yes. But that's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, man. The Lake District isn't really an area that most people associate with our industrial past and heavy industry. But once upon a time, around Wookington and Barrowin Furnace, you know, there were great industrial centres and they mined iron ore by the hundreds of tons and it was some of the best iron ore in all of, it, all of England, you know. And alas, it's all gone now, you know. Uh, a bit sad, really. But while we're up here, we're calling on a mate of mine, Mr. Richard Ransom, who is also a fellow traction engine owner and steam engine enthusiast, to do a few running repairs because it's uh, giving me trouble, you know. I'm a bit disappointed in it. Oh, no. The trouble is, in all the hurry to get the engine on the road, Fred didn't really have time to do all the fine tuning he would have liked. So he keeps coming across these little problems that need to be sorted out. It isn't steaming very well at all. I think <coughs> the fact that piston rods and I think I've put, it's my fault, you know, I've put the cylinder block a bit too far forward. And the, I know for the fact that the piston, the high pressure piston, covers the portals up when, when it's in the forward position, mm. which means that, you know, when it's supposed to be working, <laughs> the steam can't get at it properly, you know. So what I'm going to do is, when I get to Mr. Ransom's, I'm going to beg him to use his workshop <laughs> and shorten the piston rods by about a quarter of an inch. Are you going to get the dips off? Wow. Well, <laughs> there's another big hill yet. Fred knows some good steam engine men. 
Man, it helps to know somebody. Wow, man. man. Just a quarter of an inch can cause a catastrophic, possibly catastrophic failure, man. That's insane. Yeah. That's nothing. I, oh. I wish I was more technically savvy and to understand, like, what the hell he was talking about. I have and no idea. Speak. I have no idea, but I know it doesn't sound cheap or easy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that... That's a bucket list item of mine, and it might be a new career path of mine, is cars. Like, I always wanted to know how to work on them and just being able to speak that kind of language. Oh, that so, would be awesome, man. It's just practical. Yeah. Practical. Like, you know, like it's so useful to yourself to yeah. know about it. Yeah, you 100%. Know? Yeah. Like, I, like my, my brother-in-law, man, he's he's an awesome mechanic, and uh, he that's that's what he does. He just... He just goes around saving money for the family. Yeah. You know? Always wrenching. Always wrenching, man. Yeah. Man. Awesome. Awesome, man. It's Don't crazy. Him, who he's going to be able to get some help and advice from. But he's got to get there first. Fred's engine is a four horsepower model built to pull around 15 tons. But right now, it's struggling to pull two. This is ridiculous, isn't it? At least the scenery is good. It's time for a rethink. Fortunately, Fred's friend Dick Ransom has arrived and he's got a plan. I was a bit worried as to whether the engine would get the van up. So Dick's got one of his mates that'll come and rescue it, you know, pull it up with a Land Rover. Yeah. It's a bit of an insult to our engine. <laughs> it's just a bit of insurance, Fred. Well, well uh, <laughs> when we get there, we're going to do some running repairs, aren't Absolutely, we? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, uh, make it well again. Any man who never did it never, so never took the risk. It, it, never was a man, wasn't it? <laughs> when you think we had boiler in about five different pieces, three times, you know, yeah. before we finally riveted yeah. it together. Yeah. They must have lost them at somewhere. Like, yeah. Anyway, I think, you know, if we do what we say, I think yeah. we are it. Well, we'll give it a whirl. Yeah. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Well, you're right. <laughs> That's a bit easier without the living van in tow. A little bit. How? How what? How are they going to tow that? It's two tons. It's 4,000 freaking pounds. I that don't know, man. That going to pull that thing? Oh, my God. Oh must, my must god! Must be a soup, souped up Land Rover. <laughs> man, they just don't. Make, I guess they don't make Land Rovers like they used to, man. Because you hook one of those things up to the new Land Rovers, you're dropping your engine on the road, man. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh my god. Yeah. Very hard to back up a four wheel wagon. I don't know that. It's doing very well. Yeah. Wow. It's been such a disappointing journey. <laughs> but we're going after in the morning when it's cooled down, you know, set the cylinder end covers off and uh, weigh up how much we can take off the end of the piston rod and uh, hopefully he'll help me, I know he'll help me, I know he will do that because I've known him a long time if something happened we lost the nuts and they never got put back you know so I hope it's not so, oh. <laughs> never mind losing your nuts <laughs> thank you Mr Ransom <laughs> that's right, Mr Dean God. Yeah, God bless you <laughs> have you got another crate for that? <laughs> yeah, 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 I've got some oh, too good yeah. Uh, Why out. have you not got one? No, I, I'm, I'm a bitter man. Oh, I, uh, no. I, I don't. I'm not a reached out fella. Well, I am. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Good health. Good health. Good health. Mm. Yeah. Mortal. Mortal. Moving it. All right. So I'll get out your way then. Man. 
Pretty man. Mm-hmm. Whoa, whoa, that's full forward. Now, you, yeah. you can see the port there, can't you? Yeah. yeah. But is it enough, you know? Now, I don't think that's healthy looking, is it? No, uh, but you see what I mean? It's in that recess, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, but, yeah. But it's yeah. not healthy looking, no. It is, it's, it's too long, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we've got to shorten, maybe leave this one. Well, right. just about covering it up, isn't it? Right, I reckon yeah. about a quarter of an inch easy. Yeah. It'll, it'll make it so the steam comes in a lot better than it is doing. Just hold it there, Jack. Just back a bit. Whoa. Yeah, go on, Jack. You know, we've so, got uh, Roger coming, who's, a, who's quite a leading authority. Oh, absolutely, on, yeah. on steam engines. He actually makes steam engines for rich people's steam yachts, you know, for the way it be and everywhere else. Turn it back again, Jack. Money. Way money. Yeah? <laughs> what have you found then? We, we've uh, got a problem. You've got a nest in there, have you? Uh, yeah, I've got a worry. A nest? <laughs> Can you lift it up then? <laughs> <laughs> right. What do you think the what? whole cross head, the whole it, it, piston rod, the whole lot? Yeah, yeah it's too way. far forward. There is a slight uh, clearance. Yeah, so. yeah, but um, well, it goes. You know, yeah, might yeah. bugger all, you yeah, know, nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it would, yeah. it works it. Yeah. In, if you put it in, if we're 200 on the clock, yeah. and you open the regulator, it's even reluctant to start without the double eye. Yeah, well, well, what do you think, Roger, you know? Generally, it's it's not, not in bad uh, condition. Mm. I'm a bit um, worried about the way the piston is covering the port yeah. opening mm. in mm. the cylinder, mm. so that when the valve opens, the, there is no room for the yeah, steam, steam to get through. Yeah. So what I propose doing is lending you a high-speed burr yeah. and machining a lot of the iron out of mm. the cylinder round the port. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go down to my boat and yeah. uh, if uh, later in the day you mm. fancy coming out for a run, yeah, then, that, uh, yeah, I love that. Get me away from this thing. Have a, yeah. you get something that works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's then. nice to see you. Yeah. Anyway. See, see you, know, you later, Roger. You know, you know, yeah. He knows people, man. Like, yeah. Divna knows real people. Like, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Like you say, if if you got a problem, he knows the right people. Yeah. If he can't fix it, he knows the right people to fix you it. You know someone who can fix it. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's, oh my God. And I don't know if these guys are still around me. And, you know, we know, I, I know that we, we lost Dibna and that's, that's a sad reality of it all. But these other, yeah, and these other folk that he know, no one's young. No one's yeah, young. We've got, we've got Guy Martin, but, uh, yeah. but, you know, real, but he's, he's a different, you know, he's a racer and yeah. works on machines, but same time, you know, these types, you know, the real working class backbone of yep. uh, of Great Britain, even in in America. I mean, there there there's still some of them. I've I've yeah. got some of them. Just yeah. haven't moved they're down here. They're so spread they're out, out there. Sure. They're spread they're out, and they don't spread get out. the recognition yeah. that the Dibnas get. No, and and it's 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 amazing how quickly how quickly they mobilized. That's. Yeah. Because over here it would take um, a month minimum to mobilize mm -hmm. uh, professionals in that in that craft. You know, even if right. you had the clout and and just knowing the people and being friends, like you know, no one does yeah, this. They because odds are good they run a business and they need at least two to three weeks of uh, yeah. scheduled out time for an appointment. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yep. That's crazy, man. Oh yeah. Bye. Good afternoon, Roger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have you got have you got steam up? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, blowing off. Yeah. We're we ready for our trip round the lake. All right. Oh nice. Steamboat. Shamrock. Well, the Shamrock, she was built in 1906 by Shepherds of Bonus. Yeah. Wealthy families, such as, I think I'm right in saying that the families like Beatrix Potter's family used to come and take mm. the, the castle for the summer mm. season. Uh, and 
the boat would be mm. part of the hiring. And what? then eventually Second World War came along and the numbers of people that could afford to do this sort of thing had gone. And uh, immediately after the war, it had its lovely steam plant removed, it had a, a, a TVO engine fitted, mm. and then about 10 years later, it went one step worse and had a diesel engine mm. fitted. Mm. And all this lovely boiler casing and everything was removed. The, mm. the whole boat lost its dignity. Yeah. And mm. uh, until 1976, uh, it was just lying derelict because mm. nobody wanted to go out mm. in an old-fashioned mm. boat like mm. this. Yeah. You know, the awful <laughs> 60s and 70s, yeah, you know, yeah. old was yeah. not wanted. Yeah. To the white and plastic. So it just laid around empty, no engine, no anything. It was just mm. a, a hull. Yes. Yeah. Roger obtained it mm. and uh, it took three years almost to get the, uh, mm. the boat back into mm. its original concept. Mm. Wow, beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it is the way to go, isn't it? It I is. Mean, mm. The modern diesel yeah. is very good, but it's not like <laughs> this, <laughs> is it? Yeah. I mean, there's really no sound mm. at all, is there? There's no feel, there's no motion, no, no, there's no, no, no. nothing. I believe you've finally mended my gramophone. Oh, I did, but it isn't a gramophone, it's a phonograph. Phonograph. Mm. It's a 1905 Edison mm. Gem Mark B phonograph. And mm. it's clockwise, a clock, wow. of course, and it's got a lovely mm. aluminium horn. This is new, that's new. The cylinder is made of wax, it's also 1905. Wow. It's an Edison Bell cylinder. They were made in this country. Mm -hmm. Most cylinders you can get hold of are American. Mm. But this is English. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. And we'll see if it'll go. That's not up to speed, but we'll soon see. <laughs> Do you like it? Yeah, it's wonderful, yeah. That's crazy, dude. Them lads who recorded that will not be around, will I doubt it. <laughs> It'd be hard to be smelly, won't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> you like that? Nice. Very nice. I mean, there's, there's, there's always, there's, there's a, there's an art form to restoring the, the, the old, old nostalgic, like things like that. You know, I, I, yeah. I put, I put this, I put this man on this boat on the same level as a, as a uh, historian or a, a curator, art curator, like. Yeah, restoring yeah. old artwork like that's what he's yeah. doing to be put in museums, things like that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, like that's the that times you know, pop music at the time, so it's a, a blast from the past. <laughs> yeah, like there was the vinyl revival, but this is like way before <laughs> vinyls. Yeah. This was, yeah, this was the OG. <laughs> this was oh, yeah. the OG wax cylinder, dude. Man, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh man, Merlin, <laughs> you like that? <laughs> there we are. Now back to work on the engine. Will the engine doctor be able to cure the problem? Well, Roger's got his handheld milling cutter and we're going to put a chamfer on the uh, port so that when the piston is, you know, in its full forward position, steam can come past the end of it, you know. It, 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 we think it's a different piston that's too thick and it's covering the portal, you know, when it comes forward. Maybe doing the same going backwards, you know. Now for the big test. Is the engine going to work any better? It's 
across. So far, so good. We're now off to Egremont and the last deep iron ore mine in Europe that still works. And when we get there, we should find out whether our running repair is a success. Huh. Well, mind it. The work of the engine doctor seems to have done the trick. Wow. Yes. Iron ore production in Cumbria reached its peak in the 1880s and there were over 300 iron ore shafts. Right then, the industry employed over 5,000 people in Cumbria. Wow. Today, there's just three and they're at Florence. What? Three. Kill them, do you think? Ah. You come up the hill with the brakes on again. Okay. We've been waiting a couple of hours for yeah, you. Yeah, well, we... I'm pleased you got here. We're <laughs> ready to go down the pit. It's, it's a long way from, from uh, where we come from. I've forgotten this thing that long. <laughs> yeah, but with this god here, that's the main thing. It don't like hills, this thing, you know. Okay, all right. It don't like hills, there's plenty of them. Well, I hope you like hills, because yeah. we've got a cup lamp and a helmet yeah, in here. Yeah, I know, a big hill down the big ground, yeah. <laughs> Have you got your, your incline railway going yet? Yes. It's the mine is still a commercial operation, and the ore they mine here is used to make pigments for the dye that goes into paints. Get your heads and your backs oh. there, lads. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we were a great big mining industry around here. Yeah, yeah. I, we had about between two and three hundred iron ore mines. How many men? Uh, well, there'll be in this pit alone at the start of the second world war there'll be a thousand men. Yeah. This one pit. Right. In fact, we've got we've got eleven shafts here. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And this is uh, the site of number three uh, old court shaft. Yeah. This one was sunk in 1905. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when you were, when you were sinking this drift down, or, or you know, netting like this. How much powder would you use for, you know, advanced sort of Well, you went for a five-foot advance yeah. every shift, and you would yeah. use 20 to 30 pounds of explosive, mm. a fairly yeah. high explosive, yeah, yeah. and, of course, detonators. Oh, um, the men worked in companies, mm. which would either be twos or threes, mm -hmm. and their daily routine would be for the blast at the end of the shift, mm. really for to get the fumes clear. Yeah, yeah, uh, we favoured spraying it into the air, a mixture of compressed air, water, and castor oil of all things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a great media for the kill Trying dust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Castor oil, eh? Mm. Can be regular, that, won't it? <laughs> 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 Have you have still got that exotic odour here, see? <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at them. Yeah. Oh, they're in fine uh, yeah. growth there, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether we can harvest them. Have you them tried any in the pan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this is where we come to the ore. Yeah. Mm. Remember as well, of course, that there were the, those two to three hundred mines, perhaps all owned by different companies, and all selling to different ironworks. Uh, and they were vying with each other for quality and price. Mm. It, it, it was a very uh, competitive area to be in and a competitive industry to be in. And this isn't a little steam engine down here. Machinery like this in the mine is powered by compressed air. Right, well, in here we've got our atmosphere wow. for loader. Yeah. It's powered by compressed air. Well, it's usually. It does indeed. Yeah. It has a bucket on the front yeah. and it loads into its own body. Yeah. And when it's full, we travel it back to the top of the ore pass mm -hmm. and we can tilt the body up. Mm -hmm. The rear door opens and we tilt it so that the load drops into the ore pass. Mm. Marvellous machine, isn't it? Yeah. How old is it? That's a good question. We mm. first got them at Hale Moor in 66, I would say. Mm. 
So it would be yeah, brand new vintage. in about 1966. <laughs> vintage. Wow. Bit. All our ore went to be made into pig iron and then steel. Yeah. Some at Workington and yeah. some down at Miller. Yeah. Which was a one industry town. Fred, come and have a look at this in the roof here. It's as good an exam example of kidney yeah. ore you'll see anywhere in the world. Yeah. Tremendous ore. Yeah. Magnificent. All round here. 80% iron. Yeah. Almost good enough for to make hematite jewelry out of. Yeah. But it's a little bit like onion skins. Yeah, See the it? thin layers? You need yeah. thick layers for to make good jewellery. Yeah. We don't get much well, of it nowadays. Well, you know, where was it from that sort of stuff? Well, I don't think we've yeah. solved how yeah, it has no, been nobody formed. Knows, no, it? I don't think so. It yeah, just appears right. randomly yeah. in the body of the ore. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's tons of it around here, isn't there? Well, there is, Fred, but yeah. we've got to leave it for there for the time being, yeah. I think. Right. He wants some of this. Yeah, you know he does. He's like a kid in a candy shop. Mm -hmm. Have you got plenty of water just yet? Maybe this is just my ignorance of the whole thing, but I figure going into there, you'd just be getting coal to put make energy. But I, I, apparently, there's more to that now. I have no idea. I have no idea. That's a that is a that trade that. That that whole industry is foreign to me. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, I, I know our our the closest I think we would have is people from West Virginia, like old right old the heads coal from, out, out there. From, yeah, out there. Because yeah, I I don't know, man. That's crazy. But maybe this just shows the power of the Dipna. Is that you know he's such a recognizable and loved public figure, and he has the clout to shed a spotlight on yeah. this type of thing now we learn about it yeah i i love that though that's what this whole journey is is like he's shedding light on not only his friends but like the trades that are slowly being forgotten the trades that were once powerhouses that built the country yes that are just laying in ruin going <laughs> like by just, the wayside yeah like five thousand employees at one point now, now down, to, down three. to three Talk about insanity. Talk about uh, oh my god. Yeah. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy, man. Finishes Fred's job up. He likes his brass and copper polished up nicely. And then later on we're going to get steam up and shoot off to Workington Steelworks where all the iron ore from Florence went to. It was running better. I mean, it'll have a good trial today when we steam off to Wickington. I have a bit more to do yet before he comes because uh, <laughs> he likes to see it gleaming. Mm -hmm. Just wipe the paintwork over and then uh, we're ready for off and getting it all dirty again. Ready for polishing tomorrow. <laughs> running very well actually on our reasonable level roads it's all right just when you come to a big steeper and it's like motor cars you've got to change gear <laughs> nice to see you here <laughs> <laughs> we're now injecting that means we're putting water in the boiler. When it's uh, gone up about an inch, we'll set off. I'm ready for a pint of my tea. <laughs> are, you, are you stopping at run tonight? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, right. So, yeah. We're, so we're both stopping at run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, that bloody leaving it on its own. <laughs> Next morning, it's off to the steelworks to see where the raw material that was mined at Florence was turned into a product. Wow. 
all the ore mined at the Florence mine came here to the Workington ah. Steelworks where it were converted by Bessemer converters into steel to manufacture railway lines. Wow. 95% of the UK's railway line were rolled here at Workington. And I don't wow. think there's a railway in all the world that's not got Workington steel stamped on the side of its track. Today, most of it is rolled in this modern computer-controlled rolling mill. But what Fred was interested in seeing was the old hand-rolling mill, which is still used for small, light and narrow-gauge railways. So this is the last uh, very small rolling mill in the country now. It's pretty ancient, that, isn't it? It is uh, very, very old. So this was driven by a steam engine, yeah. and this was taken out uh, some years ago. Yeah. Uh, it still works and we still get a, a good saleable yeah. product oh, yeah. from this mill. Well, with the steam engine, isn't that right? Yeah, in the drive. Yeah. Very similar to what I remember when I was a bit younger in Bolton. Uh, and all, and, uh, was that all manual operation? Yeah, all, 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 yeah but oh. they, they used to let me have a go, but it was bloody harder than it was. Right. <laughs> but I right. suggest that we go around to the right. front yeah. of the process oh, and then yeah. we'll. Uh, yeah. Have a look at the staff. Right. Come down to this door, down there. This uh, tube. Right, this goes up again. Right. How long do these lads do it before they get a break? Uh, well, it's intended to go <laughs> He's off now, he says. <laughs> uh, we'll have uh, like an hour on. Then half an hour off, rotate around to an easier job to try and uh, make sure that they're not all on the same job all the time. It's in your bloody short there. They have couches in this rolling mill near where are at. You were right, nice. You're very young and never been sleep by now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's coming towards the end of this fight. This is the future in the centre. This is the 113 pound rail yeah. that we do for network rail. Yeah, right. uh, this is the future yeah. uh, of making sure that uh, yeah. we have good, consistent uh, rail manufacturing. Good for Great Britain. I <laughs> say, look, Great Britain. Yeah. All right. Like a great snake, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You're not a bug across road doing about four bloody pumps. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> there's one left. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, mm. 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 In 1962, the steel industry employed around 5,000 people in Wilkington. Now there are just 200 employees. Man. Most of the old ways of working have gone forever. It's really awe inspiring to see yeah. how the, all, all these steel things, iron things, are made. I mean, now I get why they were in that cave. They mined it from there, brought it over there, melt it down, make a recipe. Out comes the final product. Yeah. I might even compare it to like baking, like bread or something like that. Certain ingredients, yeah. got to shape it. And I mean, yeah, I guess, yeah, you could. I mean, if you, if you boil it down like that, you know, if you, if you <laughs> yeah, I guess at the very middle school level it is it kind of is like that yeah you know it's, even though you're dealing with like tons of flaming lava metal <laughs> right right but then again you're also dealing with 500 degree ovens or 350 degree oil and or like a grill that's at a thousand degrees so yeah there's there's gotta be some similarities there probably i'm pretty sure 90 percent of those guys would love to bake <laughs> well they are already baking <laughs> yeah railroad that's true. That's rails true. that's true yeah Oh yeah. man. I mean, maybe some of them are baking, you know, <laughs> but not on the job, hopefully. No, no, not on the job, man. Not with just 200 people left. <laughs> right, like, exactly. God, man, that's crazy, yeah. dude. But down at a local pub, Fred met some of the former workers to find out what it used to be like. <laughs> that mill that you saw, where they're doing it by hand. Yeah. We always referred it as number two mill. Mm. We had a rolling mill in Bolton up until about 20 years ago. Right. And it were, it was steam driven with a vertical steam engine. 
your men had a rougher time still today. They had bloody couches and easy chairs. Get when they dumped so many passes, they all like, flopped it to them. And they had a propeller off an aeroplane, ridden yeah. with a belt, going round and round, yeah. keeping them cool. Now, we had the Solway Colliery, and it closed. And we lads, we worked in the Bessemer, in the steelmaking plant. And these colliers got to start in the, the Bessemer shop. And uh, do you know how long they lasted? One day. And the reason was, it's too dangerous here. <laughs> Oh, and off, oh, and no I thought, these are miners who are yeah, working, yeah, yeah. what, three mile under the sea? Oh, all them sparks. Yeah, it was frightening, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. quite frightening, really, isn't it, if you watch it? You know, if you realise what could happen to you, you know, if you know, went wrong. Oh, you would be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was one of a group who was injured in 1962 when, uh, when this ladle of iron fell. This shackle had been used, which wasn't really supposed to be used. It was a bit like the straw that broke the camel's back. It was only a small emergency ladle with four mm. tonne in, but of course, came down. And oddly enough, I was in charge of the job at the time, and uh, I got knocked down in the rush. And you, you sort of automatically put your hands out to save yourself. Mm. Yeah. And even though I was a, an under-manager, if you like, I'd never been frightened to use a shovel and had fairly horny hands. Mm. And I remember the skin started peeling off like blotting paper. Mm. And I'd only had my first card about three weeks before. And I thought, yeah, oh Christ, I'm not, not going to be able to drive the bloody car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it bloody hurts, doesn't it? You know. One of the first jobs, the boys, when they came in the best of at 14 or 15, was taking the sample from the pitch side. Oh, yeah. To the laboratory for, yeah, for to, to chemical analysis, analysis you see. and yeah. what they used to do was that they, they had a bent bit of wire, yeah. uh, maybe it's about a quarter of an inch yeah. diameter, yeah. and 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 they used to carry it in yeah. that. You say, yeah. well, this little chap George Dickinson, you remember George, and he wanted a, a Jimmy Riddle, you say. Yeah. So he's standing in behind uh, tin sheets at pitch side, and he has this bloody thing in his hand, and he happened to catch it, you see, and of yeah. course he burned it, so he went over, <laughs> to, went over to the ambulance station, and he said, oh, he said, I've burnt my pencil. <laughs> <laughs> so they bandaged it up, but they didn't leave him a wall at the, at the end. <laughs> oh, no! Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> We've run out. Well, it's go. been a warm and I'll volunteer. day with yeah. the steam machinery. Are you driving? Are you driving? Are you driving? Why? I'm, I'm uh, driving. Like, I'm all these line. two don't no, like do it. I can line. only steer it. I have to keep off the house. Keep it, it, all keep all it in the dark. Who's done all the bloody polishing? Oh, well, that's your, oh, that's God, your job. Now there's a long drive ahead as Fred and Alf head through the Scottish borders on their way from West Cumbria to Bowness on the Firth of Forth. All right. Man. They'll be visiting an iron foundry to find out more about the casting process and the foundryman's trade. And while they're in Scotland, Fred will be driving his engine over the Forth Road Bridge. Wow. Look at that. Wow, another riveting that's episode awesome, man. here. Man, that's awesome. Very yeah. educational, very wholesome. Yeah. Very funny to see Divna handle those kind of uh, struggles with yeah. his steam engine. He's like, yeah. he's like, he's just throwing his hands in the air. Just you, you're very similar like that. It's like, yep, this is my day. Yep, pretty much. Like, hey man, you gotta cut a quarter inch off. Well, we can't do that here. Like, yeah, we gotta just have to figure it out. You know, mm -hmm. and, and it's just, it's just, you know, he is, he is. He is surrounded by the the professionals, the OGs in the trade, and he's still respected because yeah. they know that he is himself an OG in his own trade. And that's right. the thing within like the blue collar uh, community, right? Uh, like you just respect the trades. Like you just, you know, we all know it sucks. You know, yeah. you're just like, hey, you work hard, I know you work hard. We work hard, I know we work hard, kind of thing. Yeah. We just respect each other. That's it. You you embrace that suck. Yep, pretty much. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah. You know? And and talent and and 
talent respects talent kind of thing. Yep. Yep. Real yep. recognizes real. Yep. Yeah, and yep. so it should. It was just. I want to say that's one of the most heart, like heartfelt moments so far that I've seen. Just the guys just chatting away, just yeah, chatting yeah. away at the pub. Yeah, like that's just that's where it's reminiscing. At. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 the real stuff, man. Yeah. That's the real stuff. Oh man! Obviously, a two thumbs yeah. up episode. Yeah, it, 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 like the whole series is going to be that way. Yeah. We got nine more episodes of this. That's Twelve awesome. Parts, so. That's awesome. Yeah. So for the next 12 weeks, buckle up. Every Sunday, you're going to get one of these. Hey, man. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. I'm excited, yep. man. Yep. <sighs> Y'all, there's someone around to subscribe and watch another video. Wash your hands, scrub your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, embrace the suck. Unplug and do something epic, guys. See you on the next one. Later. Fellas, we could be that mistake. Let's do this.